following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at CARM.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's me, Matt Slick. You're listening to Matt Slick Live. I hope you're all going to have a good time, a good day, and uh, may the Lord bless you. If you want to give me a call, all you got to do is dial 877-207-2276. You can also email me, and to do that, uh, just send your address or your email to info at and uh, get to uh, the question. If you have radio questions, we have a bunch that are sitting there, so I can get to those if nobody calls in, which uh, often is the case, or sometimes is the case during the summer months uh, when people start going out and having fun instead of listening on the air, on the radio. But you can call me, like I said, 877-207-2276. And uh, let's see, if you want, you can watch. I'm going to hit go on this. Don't, uh, right there. There we go. You can watch us uh, and participate in the chat if you'd like to do that. Uh, just go to rumble.com forward slash Matt Slick Live, and uh, you'll find it. You'll find it uh, right there. We get people in the room. And 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 in there at a time, chatting, and a lot of fun. All right. Whew. Okay. So I was just in a clubhouse room right before I came on here debating the doctrine of the person of Christ. And this guy, uh, this guy, uh, he said, I've debated you before. Dude, slow down. And he was verbal carpet bombing, claiming victories, claiming all kinds of stuff. And it's like, guy, man, stop. And I was writing down what he was saying at 80 miles an hour. And uh, you said like four things, four, no, six things, I think. I wrote them all down. And uh, he said, now, wait, 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 the reason I'm bringing it up is because I'm developing a uh, an outline. I do outlines, okay, on uh, Unitarianism and their attacks on the person of Christ, and attacks on the Trinity, and things like that. And uh, now it's 28 pages. That's not very long, but uh, I don't think it's really kind of sufficient until it's over 50 pages. That's just me. Yeah, I got issues, I guess, but uh, I got a lot of stuff I'm working on there. Okay, hey, why don't you give me a call? 877-207-2276. And tonight, and uh, let's see, three and a half hours from now, it'll be 9.30 Eastern time. I know it's late for the East Coast people, but that's just how it is. Our schedule's here and stuff like that. I'll be teaching a Bible study, and we're going through the book of Romans, chapter 8, starting at verse 12. I'm not sure how far we're going to go in that, because um, there's a break of topic that I want to really want to focus on maybe more next week. So I may just kind of do a shorter study tonight. I don't know. We'll see how that goes, but you're welcome to join us. And uh, to do that, um, I guess it'll be on uh, karm.org forward slash calendar, uh, forward slash calendar. You can do that. And uh, actually, we should put it up on the social media thing, too. There's so much that we got to do. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff. Hey, nobody's calling. Okay, all I'm going to do is get to some of the emails, but before I do that, I just want to let you know that we do, oh, there's the calls, we do stay on your, uh, stay on your, stay on the air by your support, we do need it, um, I'm just going to, I don't like asking, I, I, it's one of the things that people have said I just don't do enough of, I don't like asking, I, I really don't, but I'm going to, you know, i got to do that, i got to say, hey, look, would you please consider supporting us at $5 a month, that's not much. And it's easy to set up. You just go to CARM, C-A-R-M, you know, CARM.org, forward slash donate, and everything you need right there. And we don't have it go through PayPal. We still have some old ones through PayPal, but PayPal's gone liberal, woke, and uh, we, we moved away from that a while back. We have another system, and it won't go woke and things like that. So that's one good thing. So uh, and it works out really nicely, Christian-based stuff. We're trying to be responsible as much as we can. So if you would be so kind and generous as to support us at $5 a month, uh, we want to, want to say thanks. Now, there's a guy I called this morning. I'm not going to give too many details. And uh, he sent a check in. And let me just say, uh, 
uh, wow, thank you, it really helped, it saved the day. It did. Uh, it saved the day. And uh, uh, his initials are G.H., and uh, I don't like to give public recognition unless I want to take the reward away from somebody, yeah, from the Lord, but, uh, you know, whatever. All right, there we go, there we go, there we go. Let's get to Cody so from there Boise. Is there like hey. a correct way to read hey, it? Cody. Or Cody. there's a, a <laughs> way that... Cody, you're on the I air, buddy. possibly... Hey, Cody, I'm you're sorry. on the air, man. Yeah. All right. Oh, hey, how's it going, man? <laughs> it's going. Hey, you're in Boise, that's good. You're only just a stone throw away from me. Yeah, I, I heard that this morning. I've been listening to your episodes and heard that, and I was like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I teach a Bible study tonight. If you want to come, you can check it out. You know, email me at info, and I'll talk to you if you want. If you're interested, if not, no big deal. But uh, oh, I'm definitely interested. Yeah, well, email me info at karm dot org if you want, and uh, okay. I'll talk. I'll call you up. Give me your phone number. I'll call you up and make sure you're kosher. You know, stuff like that. Uh, okay. Okay. So, so what do you got, man? What's up? I said my question is: um, Is there a church that you would recommend? over any others. I mean, I, I was baptized Catholic, and I do not follow mm -hmm. the Catholic Church anymore. Good. But um, I've been reading the Bible since the beginning of the year. I've been going over it from the beginning to the end, um, mm -hmm. just so I know the basic outline of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I listen to a lot of people, and they skip around the Bible, mm -hmm. and some verses I'm familiar with, because I've already gone over them, some of them I'm lost, and I'm afraid that if I hear, hear too much that I don't understand, I might get a wrong understanding. Okay. Um, so is, there, is there a correct way, is there a correct way to read the Bible, or is there just any way you feel, feel right by it? Well, that's a big question, um, but I'm going to tackle two things one is there is a church i can recommend to you uh that's uh okay. you know the, off of uh oh, where is it it's in boise there's called the well and um josh is the pastor he's a good guy he's reformed he's been doing a lot of good work there and uh, you know where the boise aquarium is you know what you know where that is yes the, i do uh, Okay, so that's that the street that goes north and south. I forgot the name of the street, mm -hmm. but it's it's there. And there's an Albertsons up there, you know. And you go up there near oh, okay. Franklin, and so you just go back a couple hundred feet. It's right there, the well, and it's on the uh, the east side. And I check that out seriously. Mm -hmm. I recommend them. The well, okay. as in mm -hmm. W E L L. Yep, the well in Boise. Okay. So if you look up the okay. well, uh, it's Reformed Church in Boise, mm -hmm. and uh, you get there, you can tell them. Hey, a guy named Slick recommended you. They'll smile because I've been there many times. I used to teach over there and stuff. They're good guys. So I'd recommend that. That's um, why I, okay. I got one more question, then I'll sure. leave you alone. Um, okay. I, I, I've been reading the New King James Version of the Bible. Is that okay. a good uh, yeah, translation, good. or should I be reading something different? Well, it depends. You see, um, I'm biased, so consider the source here. Uh, the, the New King James is fine. The King James is fine. The NASB is fine. The ESV is fine. But if you want serious study, use the ESV or the NASB. If you want, okay. uh, if you want something that that's, the New King James is a fine Bible. Uh, I'm not knocking it, but I would just say that uh, in my experience, a Bible study and teaching that the uh, the more accurate translations are the more modern ones. And mm -hmm. the NASB is what I use. And I, I like to say pa Paul the Apostle used it, you know. You hear people say that kind of thing. And so I use that. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's a very good translation. The ESV is also a very good translation. So those are the ones I'd recommend. Okay. But if you say, no, I'm going to stick with the New King James, like, okay, you know, it's all right. Well, you know, I, I went to a church called the of God in Burley, yeah, and I was going there good. quite a bit, and I, mm -hmm. I, I was okay with it until they had a speaker, and he was doing mm -hmm. uh, laying of the hands. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I went up, and he laid his hands on me and said I was healed, and I spent some floor time, and I just, I didn't get anything out of it. The Assemblies of God is overly charismatic and has women pastors and elders, and my recommendation is you avoid the Assemblies of God Church. 
Okay. Okay. That's good. I, I haven't I haven't attended church in so uh, probably fifteen years now. Um, yeah. Basically, I just I'm asking a lot of people like what what's a good church, and I don't want them okay. to be biased. But I'd well, like you know sure. their actual recommendations. Well, what so what uh, city I'm do you live in? Definitely check out the well. Okay. What city? You, you, are you in Boise? I am in Boise, yes. Okay, yeah. Check out the well. I, I would just say check out the well. It's not too far from where you are. You know, it's just gotta go down no, Franklin no. or whatever. Take the freeway. It's but, actually right down the road from me, so Oh well. Well go go check it out. Go yeah. Sunday and look up the well and uh the pastor's name is Josh and you can check out, you'll mm-hmm. see that. And if you have any questions, you can email me and uh I'll tell Josh that you know that you're on your way or he'll you know look 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 for you. But just, I would just go. And I would recommend Josh. Now, I don't agree with everything Josh says. He's, he's a cessationist in the charismatic gifts. I believe they've continued. But that's okay, you know. But he's a good man of God, a good preacher. He's faithful to the word. And I can just recommend him without um, hesitation. He's a good teacher. See, that's, that's exactly what I, what I want. I want. I don't want to be misled by anybody. You know, I, I want to make these decisions. With a lot of thought, prayer, and, and planning. That's you fine. Know, I don't want to just join up with the church and find find out down the road that it's not the church for me. It, well, you know, you never know. It might be that you don't like uh, the music, or you might not like uh, how Josh uh, uh, speaks. Who knows? But yeah. normatively speaking, it's a it's a good church. I, I would cool. recommend it. Okay. All right. That sounds right. like a great plan. Okay. All right. And email me if you want uh, at info at carm.org, and um, maybe we'll talk, okay? Okay. Thank you very much. No problem, buddy. All right. Well, God bless. All right. God bless. <laughs> okay. Bye. All right. Let's get to Chuck from North Carolina. Chuck, welcome. You're on the air. Hey, Matt. How are you doing? Hey. It's going, man. It's going. What do you got, buddy? I'm curious. Uh, I read a book by about the Great Awakening, and Jonathan Edwards debated Charles Johnson okay. a lot up in uh, Boston, and okay. he was congregational. But I'm wondering if they went Unitarian yet. I don't know. I don't know anything about that debate. I do know about um, Jonathan Edwards. He was a world class level genius. Uh, that's on the level yeah. of Einstein, uh, you know, and Isaac As- I mean, not Asimov, but uh, Isaac Newton. Uh, that kind of level of world, cl- world class. So, uh, because he was so brilliant, stunningly brilliant, uh, I, I just cannot see even the possibility of him losing any debate. He's that brilliant. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan Edwards was, was defending the new light. Which were the uh, people who were probably saved through the uh, Great Awakening? Okay, yeah. So uh, I have to see and, and stuff, but I don't know too much about it, so I couldn't tell you too much. You know, I just don't know. Yeah, I was just curious, and okay. I because I know you've been talking about Unitarianism a little bit lately. Yeah, it's we been coming up. Yeah, it's been coming up yeah. more and more, and and it's rearing its ugly demonic head. Yes. Hey, there's a break, buddy. we got to yeah, go, right. okay? Amen. All right, okay, jump in. That. All right, see you. God bless. Hey, folks, five open lines. Why don't you give me a call? 877-207-2276. We'll be right back. Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. Hope you're enjoying the show. If you want to call me, four open lines, 877-207-2276. It's more a concept. Norm from Winston, you're on the air. (laughs) Hello, Matt. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Doing good, doing good. So I've heard you in the past uh, talk about when you're talking about different things, and I can't really put my uh, finger on I don't remember exactly, but you were talking about 
vertical things and horizontal things. Oh, yes, vertical and, and horizontal. I, I think, yes. mm-hmm. yeah, do you have any, uh, I, I read a science fiction, Christian science fiction book a while back, oh, wow. um, Discipling Mitra, and okay. the characters had several conversations uh, where they brought up vertical and horizontal. Do you have any recommendations oh. on I like the well, concept, and, and I'd like to read more on it. In what we're talking about in the biblical uh, theology, vertical is between God and man, horizontal is between man and man. That's all. So vertical, yes. uh, yeah. and uh, when, for example, in Romans chapter 4, uh, we'll find out that that uh, Paul is speaking of the vertical, the relationship between God and man. He says, well, then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, is found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. Now, that's Abraham and God are the topic, so that's vertical. And when you go to James, uh, James 2, for example, it's an example of the horizontal. Where it says, but someone may well say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works. I will show you my faith by my works. So that's the horizontal. And that's all that's being spoken of. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, anything, do you know of any authors that that bring the horizontal and vertical up specifically? Uh, anything worth no. reading? No. Well, Besides worth reading. Bible, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I've written a novel, uh, a sci-fi novel and a fiction novel, two different novels, uh, but I don't deal with, uh, in the, the fiction Christian-based novel, I don't deal with what's called the vertical and horizontal uh, that way specifically. But that's all it is. Okay. It's just, all right. it, it, that's all the concept is, is, for example, your justification before God, how does it, does it occur? Well, it's by faith only and Christ only, what Christ alone has done. That's how you're vertically justified, the vertical relationship, the vertical issue. The horizontal is, well, how am I made right before people? By what I do. They don't know my heart. They have to see my actions. So that's the the difference, and that's what's going on. The cults and uh, false religions like Roman Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, they they confuse the vertical and the horizontal, and they'll say that both lead to justification. Uh, Good point, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Thank well, you. God bless. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. So, yeah, I've written a sci-fi novel um, called Time Trap, if you're interested in it. I wonder what happened. Let me see if I do this right now, because I don't check. Uh, if you go to CARM.org website, the homepage, there's a graphic that shows uh, my books, and then it'll take you to another place, and... Uh, Let's see. I guess you know, some. Yeah, there they are. They're in there. So, no, time trap is in there, and um, but I don't. Oh, the influence. The the audio version is there, but we don't have uh, the written one, which I'm reworking. Anyway, we're just trying a bunch of stuff, and so there you go. If you want to check it out. All right, nobody's waiting. If you want to give me a call, you can get in. All you got to do is dial eight seven seven two zero seven two two seven six. If you've read Time Trap. Give me a call. Tell me what you thought of it. If you've read The Influence, give me a call. Let me know what you thought of it. And if you've read Atheistica, my novella, uh, please uh, let me know what you thought about it. I'd like to know. I'd just like to know. Not a big deal. I've got other books, too. Apologetics and Atheism, uh, Notes on Calvinism, Right Answers for Wrong Belief. That's out of print. Christian Defense uh, Manual. Um, yeah, there we go. And uh, we have Examining Islam. Oh boy, and we have the, yeah, we have, uh, let's also we have, oh man, that's gotta be, okay, I gotta fix some things here. We gotta do some stuff. Yep, oh, there's so much to do. Wow. Man, there's a lot. All right, let's get to Bob from Louisiana. Bob, welcome here on the air. Yeah, thank you, Matt. You should recognize the voice. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I would, I would like to talk about Zachariah. And John, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. What about Zechariah? He was the father of uh, John. Oh, that Zechariah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that Zechariah, the father of John. He's he's the one that was, you know, working in the temple at Jerusalem when uh-huh. Gabriel showed up. Mm-hmm. And and he 
he wasn't real smart because no, he, he asked him, I know this to be so he didn't get to talk for a while. You know, you're familiar with that, I know. Yeah. But but his mouth, when when the baby was born, uh, he asked, you know, for something to write on. After having none of his relatives named John, and uh, anyway, immediately, uh, they were wondering, you know, when he began to talk after writing John on that piece of paper. Now, mm-hmm. now, what I was trying to get at is in Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, okay. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished redemption for his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of David, his servant. Isn't he talking about John here? Well, I have to look at the verse. What verse? I'm waiting for you to... I wasn't sure what you're getting at, so I wasn't following you exactly. So what verse are you looking at? Uh, verse 68. Of? In what Luke book? 1. Luke 1, Luke 1, 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited... Okay, so the father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, okay, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited us, us accomplished the redemption of his people and raised up a horn of salvation for us. Yeah, in the house of David, his servant. Yes. Okay. Is, isn't he? Isn't he talking about John? Um. No, uh, he's talking about Jesus, um, because that's the horn of salvation. The house of David, his servant. That's what's going on. Um. So. Are you huge, sure? Well, let me look at the context here. Uh, the eighth day, the circumcised a child. Uh, we should call his name John, um, and they said no one's relatives by that name. He asked for a tablet and wrote, his name is John. At once his mouth was opened, long tongue loosed. Uh, fear came all over all of them, um, being talked, and it was being talked about in Judea. All who heard them kept them in mind, saying, "What then will this child turn to be out? out turn out to be? For the hand of the Lord is surely on him." And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord of God of Israel, for he has visited us and accomplished uh, redemption for his people and uh, raised up a horn of salvation. I could see why you would uh, you could ask the question, is it talking about uh, John the Baptist? But no, it's not. Um, the horn of salvation has to be Jesus. And what was going on is that Zechariah simply prophesied. It wasn't prophesying about uh, John the Baptist. All right? And uh, so that's it. Now, there's a, an, another issue, though, I want to get to after the break. Because we're going to break, so hold on, buddy. Four open lines, if you want to give me a call, 877 207 2276. We'll be right back. Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. If you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. Let's get back on with Bob. Bob, are you there? Uh, yes, yes, Matt. And I'm still looking at this these verses in the NASB. I have the answer for you, Okay. So uh, if you look at it, you'll see that uh, goes on. He's prophesying salvation from our enemies, verse 72, to show mercy to our fathers, verse 73, the oath, uh, verse 75, in holiness, righteousness, verse 76. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. So it's a prophecy that's uh, encompassing the issue of who Christ is, what he's doing, what he's done, or what he will do, excuse me, and uh, John the Baptist. And so then he addresses uh, the child, John the Baptist, and he said, and says, you'll be called uh, the prophet of the Most High, and you'll go before, uh, before the Lord God to prepare his ways. So that's what's going on, okay? So this this prophet, this child is John, right? Yes. And he's blessing the Lord God of Israel, right? The child's blessing the Lord God. Um, 
No, John, uh, John is blessing when he prophesied. Blessed be in, in verse 68. No, no it's Zechariah doing that. Yeah, Zechariah is doing right. that concerning his child. This Jesus hasn't even been born yet. He, he don't know nothing about Jesus. Uh, no, Jesus, Jesus was alive. He was just in the womb still. Okay. Oh. Um, so, uh, blessed be the God of Israel. It's not that a person is blessing God and God's benefited from it. It's just a phrase. May the Lord be glorified. You know, glorify the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise his name. It, that's, that's what's going on. All right? But if, if we get confused on who the Lord God of Israel is, we got a problem, had not we? Yeah, that's right. And doesn't it say that uh, John the Baptist will uh, prepare the way for uh, for for the Lord, right? No, that... he's going to prepare the way for Israel to be forgiveness of sins. It, no, it says in verse 77. It says in verse 76. And you, child... Let's... Well, let's get to 76. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, go guy, ahead. hey, 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 let's look at the verses yeah. in context, okay? Yes, yes. And, go and ahead. Don't... Don't continue to ignore them like you always do. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. That's John the Baptist. For you, John the Baptist, will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. That's what it says, right? So John the Baptist is going before the Lord, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a quote from Malachi 3.1 where God says, Behold, I'm going to send my messenger. That's John the Baptist. And he will clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says Yahweh of hosts. So he says, he's proclaiming the way of, of himself. That's God. Jesus is God in flesh. So are you going to repent now and you're going to come to believe the truth about who Christ is? Not if I, since I read chapter 2. I can't. Okay. Yeah, you can. So who is John the Baptist preparing the way for? Uh, the, the Most High. Yeah, it says the Lord Most High, God, right? He's going to be, no, he's a prophet of the Most High God. Yes, yeah, John the Baptist is a prophet of the Most High. For you will go before me, the Lord, to prepare his ways. Okay, who's John the Baptist preparing the way for? Who's he preparing the way the, for? Who is John the, the Baptist? Who is John the Baptist preparing the way for? The Lord Who God of Israel. Who, good. And he prepared the way for Jesus. Okay. He prepared the way for the... Look, it says it right there. Okay, we're going to move on. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, it's just... This guy, folks, if you don't know, I, I debated him, talked about this endlessly. I proved him wrong. Uh, he just can't see, refuses to see. He's just lost. Uh, sorry, but that's what it is. Ed from Virginia. Ed, welcome. You're on the air. Hey, hey, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Just dealing with heresies, and people don't listen, don't care, don't want to know. <laughs> just I, that, guy, that, guy calls, man, that guy like, calls all the time. <laughs> I know. It's like, oh, come on. And then, you know, and then when I show him the very thing, it says repair the way for it's for Yahweh. And that's Lord God. Well, that's Jesus. He's preparing way. Well, what do you mean? You know, and he just ignores it. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. What are you going to say? You know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you put up with a lot of stuff there. Oh hey, uh, boy, do I? Hey, could you could you write? <laughs> could you write my my email down? So uh, I'd like you to send me a couple things. Good. It's uh, okay, M-Y-B-Y. Wait, 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 wait. You want everybody in and and to know your email? You're just going to, get to thousands it's of people. Junk mail. It, it's junk mail, but I'll check, check it for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, what is your email then? And what, it's okay, M Y B Y. M Y what? B Y. C is in cat. B is in boy. It's okay, my byrider dot com. So M Y B Y what? R Y. R I D E R. Uh, R I D E R. Yes. At Gmail. At Gmail. Okay, what do you want? Okay, a couple questions. Last week you were talking uh, about Mormonism, and you said there was, I don't know if it was a document or something, that you would show uh, Mormon elders who would come to your door and they basically would oh. drop the faith. Well, kind of. It was used to destroy the faith of a lot of people. 
Okay. And it's a 3,913 changes in the Book of Mormon. Okay. Okay. So, oh. And you can... 3,913 yeah. changes. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's right. Okay. And it's... And I, I don't know if... It, see, that... Okay. I'd look for it, see if you can find it. Now, what's happening... Is it is, a book? Yes. And it's what okay. it is. It's from Sandra, Gerald and Sandra Tanner. Okay. And Sandra just retired. Gerald passed away years ago. And the bookstore's closed. Everything's done. Okay. Now, this is where you get this stuff, but there's kind of a transition thing going on. And I'm not going to say too much, but there's, there's kind of a transition thing going on. I know some people and stuff down there, blah, blah, blah. So this book was done. Sandra told me that what she did was she and Gerald, they had a literal actual first edition Book of Mormon. The very first. It was original. Okay. And I've held one in my hand. Bill McKeever, a friend of mine, he used to have one or has one or whatever. And uh, so uh, so what Gerald and Sandra did was they got the then contemporary Book of Mormon and the original and they photo, photo Xeroxed copy. Back then it was photocopy. And they uh, would read the original and they would parallel it to the, to the then present Book of Mormon. And they'd mark changes. And some of them are drastic. Okay. And so the 3,913 changes documents it. The reason this is important is History of the Church, Volume 4, page 461, I think it is. The Book of Mormon was the most correct book of any book on earth, and a man could get closer to the precepts of God by following it than by any other book. So if it's so correct, why does it have uh, so many changes? In fact, Sander told me there's a lot more changes. They didn't even put everything in there. Like a couple of uh, uh, small, or at least a lot of very small things, but she said there's more. There's, there's a lot more. And so that's the, the 3,913 changes. So what I would do, I'd show it to Mormon missionaries. I'd say, so your book's accurate? Yeah, look at this. And I'd just hand it to them, and they'd fan through it, and they would see these changes all over the place. And in some places, the, the changes are dramatic. They alter the meaning of the text dramatically. So why is it so? so you can send me the author's name and the name of the book. I'd appreciate that. Well, and, it's, and another it's just, it's, it's I don't think there's an author to it. Uh, it's just Gerald and Sandra Tanner, and you could go on um, UTLM Utah Lighthouse Ministry UTLM dot org, and you can uh, the website's still up, and you can look it up and see if you can order it. I don't know if if it's still being run yet right now. So that's it. I, it, it. But I would get that. It's very powerful. Okay, let me type that in. Utah White House Ministry. Yeah. And another question, I don't know if you can help me, is... Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. I was listening to a preacher today, and he was talking about how there are many doctrines, Mormon doctrines, that aren't in the Book of Mormon. And he was mentioning quite a few. And I'm like, oh, of course. do you have a list of that? Oh, yes. If you go to the Carmen.org website, uh, and uh, let's see, forward slash Mormonism, um, I have a list of many of them. And let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. The Book of Mormon text, Book of Mormon. Some of the many changes. Uh, where is it? I've got it there. I, I haven't been on the page in a long time. I've written over 100 articles on Mormonism. Uh, and they're, they're there. Think of you know, the Book of Mormon, Book of Mormon text. Quick look at the Book of Mormon. I think that's what it is. Quick look at the Book of Mormon. Let's see. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and there's, so, okay, so the, some of the things not found in the Book of Mormon. Church organization, plurality of gods, plurality of wives, doctrine, uh, word of wisdom, God is an exalted man, celestial marriage, men may become gods, three degrees of glory, baptism for the dead, eternal progression, the Aaronic priesthood, temple works of washing, anointing, endowments, and sealing. Hey, we'll be right back after these messages. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned. And we'll be right back. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show. Let's get back on with Ed. Are you still there, Ed? Yeah, I'm still there. Okay, you a Mormon or what? Just curious. Who, me? Oh, no. no I'm a born-again believer. 
Um, okay, good. <laughs> I, I think the preacher, uh, I'm not, I could be mistaken, but I thought the preacher said something about in the Book of Mormon, it says Jesus is God. Maybe, I don't know, I might have misheard him. Yeah, it, the Book of Mormon does not contain a lot of Mormonism. Uh, it's uh, really kind of interesting because if you go to my article, a quick look at the Book of Mormon on the CARM website, you see the documentation. For example, the Book of Mormon says there's only one God. The Trinity is one God. God is unchanging. God is spirit. There's an eternal hell. Polygamy is condemned. But Mormonism teaches the contrary to those things, believe it or not. As far as it saying Jesus is God, um, uh, they did pray unto Jesus, calling him their Lord and their God, and that's, uh, oh man, it's been a long time since I quoted that one. Second Nephi 19.18, I think. Let's see if I'm pulling that out uh, right. Uh, Neph- Second Nephi 19.18. Um, oh man, I don't know. I don't think that's the right one. But it does say, uh, they call him their Lord and their God. Jesus, their Lord and their God. Where is that? Okay, I'll find it. Man, I hate it. Okay. They have to calling him their Lord and God. It does say that in the Book of Mormon. Why? I haven't talked to Mormons very much at all, and I'd forgotten about that one. And it is there. So I'll find it. Sometimes a friend of mine, uh, Charlie, he'll find it before I do. So we'll see if he's putting it in anywhere. I don't see anything. But I'll look for it here. I'll find it. Okay. Book of Mormon. All right. Okay. Uh, saying, saying, let's see, Jesus, uh, call, calling, as says, calling Jesus or Lord and God. Calling Jesus, Lord and God. All right. Come on. Oh, it's there. I'm going to have to find it. And, um, I thought it was, maybe it's 3rd Nephi 1918. Maybe that's what it is, 3rd Nephi 1918. I'm trying to remember. Got all these things in my head. Yes, found it. That, that's what it is. Instead of the, um, so 3rd uh, Nephi 1918. So, oh, man, I keep clicking the wrong thing. So here, let's get to it and I'll read it. Okay, 3rd Nephi 1918. Come on. Okay, now I'm scrolling. Here we go. Oh, you slime ball. It read. I talk to my computers when they don't do what I want. I call them slime balls and things like that. Uh, and behold, they began to pray. They did pray unto Jesus, calling him their Lord and their God. So, Third day mm. by 1918. Okay. It took a while. Okay. Great. All right. All right. I'll let you I've, go. I'm on the road. I'm working. So uh, thank you very all right. much. You okay. Sounds good, man. You too. God bless. All right, let's get to Ahmed from Arizona. Ahmed, welcome. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing? Doing all right. So what do you got, man? All right, so I'm just going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Um, okay. But let me see if you okay. could open up your Bible. If you head to the Matthew 7. Okay. Uh, Matthew seven twenty one. Okay. Just read that, I guess. Well, I and another one who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in uh, heaven will enter. Yeah. Because if they purposely don't vote, because of their ambivalence, their apathy, uh, they think it's useless, then they are m- not utilizing the God-given gift that they have. And I believe it's a a failure. Now, if you know they're sick, they can't vote, that's different. But if you just say, ah, I'm not going to vote, I don't feel like it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Then uh, the Bible says, Jesus says, give to Caesar that which belongs to Caesar. Go vote. And don't mm-hmm. complain then if the unbelievers come into your house and say, you can't have guns, you can't have a Bible, you can't uh, go to church. Okay. Don't complain at that point. Are we still on the air? Let's see. Are we absolutely, still? absolutely. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, because yeah, if we don't oh. vote, and oh, we great. don't vote the... That's great. The, uh-huh. Right people in on, who God has put on come our on. hearts to be the right people, mm-hmm. then oh, our nation is already fallen. It's oh, going to fall problem. even further, and All we're right. going to lose don't it. All right, you guys can hear me. Yes, uh, we are. Can you hear me? Um, absolutely. And that's so scary, Let's man. See. I mean, I, 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 I just, one, just it looks my like heart just break. They went down. Thank you. Oh, that man. This nation yeah, has failed this far, and that. You know, it, if we don't get yeah. the right people in office. Yeah, I'm with you. 
you know, I, you, I can, I don't know how old you are, but I'm in my sixties. I've seen so much. I've seen what's happened, and I've seen in the past, basically two, three years, how fast it went bad. I used to think when I was younger, I'm going to see the return of Christ, you know, the Antichrist and all this stuff's going to happen. I'll see the return of Jesus. And then for a long time, I said, nah, it's going to happen way after I, I pass away. And now I'm starting to wonder, wait a minute, maybe I will see it in my time. The Antichrist yeah. is, it looks like he's getting ready because of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Unrighteousness, evil, wickedness are just yeah. so prevalent. I mean, it's all around us. Yeah. I don't understand how any preacher could not occasionally, you know, not going to do it all the time, mention the necessity of us fighting against unrighteousness. I get, I just get the idea that the that it's God's in control, so we need to do nothing. I mean, when God sent, uh, when He freed Israel out of the slavery of Egypt, He had to, He not had to, but He did it by punishing people over a period of time, and then That's He right. caused he the people to, just... yeah, and He caused them to walk. Mm -hmm. They had to walk right. through the deliverance. It took a long time. That's People say, no, right. We, my we pastor right just now. preached on this, yes. Yeah. So, you know, I, I have a lot of friends. We would uh, do what's necessary, but too many people just don't. And, you, and we have to risk. Righteousness is not easy. We've got to fight against no, what's happening no, it's in our not. country. You know, well, you know, I'm, I'm 57 years old, and I got saved when I was 28, and um, I, I lived for God for 10 years, and then I backslid for a very long time, and then I, I've just recently come back to know Him, and what a glorious day that was, because I, I know, you know, now that you're, you've been out in the world, you know, when you're young, you might give your heart to Christ when you're young at vacation Bible school, but... You don't really, you're so innocent, you don't really know what he's saving you from until you get out into the world. Right. And then once you get out into the world and you've lived it, then you know what he's saving you from. When you actually go to that altar and you actually pour your heart out and you actually ask for forgiveness, and then you know what he's saving you from because you've lived in the world. Excuse That's me. when I yep. consider myself truly saved when I was 28 oh, and um, and and I praise God every day that he waited on me and he brought me back to him and you know that I did go and vote the midterms and I voted for who I thought was right and um, mm -hmm. I didn't you can trust me uh, it wasn't it, it wasn't the left <laughs> it wasn't the wrong people um yeah. You know, it wasn't these demons that they have in 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 politics now, yeah. and that's what I think. That's what I think it is. I think these people are. I think they have demons in them. I think they're part of the crew of the Antichrist. There I think are. when the Antichrist reveals themselves, these people will be involved. They'll approve of him. Yeah. Think about this: the people who are in power don't care about truth because truth and money to them are commodities and it gives them what they desire and so because of that they have no integrity they're open to corruption they get in control by lies and they're in control and then they subtly work to destroy those who stand against them and we know that's the case then what they do is they free the wicked and punish the good. This we're seeing this in our culture. It's happening more and more. A, a young girl, she didn't want a transgender. It's a guy who claims to be a girl. He wants to go in the girls' locker room in the high school and watch him undress. She complained oh about it. Goodness. They kicked her out of school. The father who worked there oh said, "Well, she, she she has a right to look." They got rid of him. This is wickedness. Mm. What at this point needs to happen yes, is you just sue. Everybody involved for everything you can get from them. Everything yes, maximum. Amen. Yep, amen. and it needs to happen all over the place.
This is why we need a yeah, national amen. kind of a registry where Christians can support, where we can say, okay, lawsuit there. But you know what? There all there are already Christian organizations who are involved with this lawyer or legal fund. We need to support them, give money to them, and and so they can hire more lawyers to go out there and do this. But it needs to happen all the time and we Christians need to be out in front of the, like for example that's school with signs saying what are you doing you know you want your kid to go in there you know and, and undress I don't want to be like I, I'll tell you if my daughter was in there and they said oh we're gonna have a guy who claims to be a girl now going in there watching your daughter undress well we, we'd have a conversation that's all I'll say oh definitely definitely yeah. and we'd have a conversation that's horrible mm-hmm and it's and it's every day that you wake up in the morning. Every day it continues to get worse and worse. You're right, and it's going to get worse if we Christians don't fight back. That's right. And it's not a pre-trib totally rapture agree. thing. I tell people, don't put your hope in the pre-trib rapture. I would be glad to have a public debate on the pre-trib rapture stuff. Not to prove right. how right I am, but to get people to wake up. Don't assume that's right. the right position. If anything, what Jesus says, when you see this, run to the hills. He says, run. Yeah. And he also says, there must before the Antichrist comes, there's an apostasy that's going to come. What's the apostasy of? The Christian church. And it, the apostasy is occurring. And I, I, I got a question for the pastors. They're listening. Are you equipping your congregation for the work of ministry? That's what your job is, Ephesians 4, 8 through 12. Read that. The job of the pastor is to equip the Christians for the work of ministry. That's what we're supposed to do. Is that what's happening? Or are you teaching them how to be comfortable at home and just pray, don't do anything? Or are you teaching them, hey, as a pastor and elder, I will be out in front of the abortion clinic on Saturday at such and such a time. Join me. Or I'm going to be out over here. Join I'm, me. Yeah. It needs yes, to happen. I, I know for sure I would be standing <laughs> right there in front. Of, I'd be right there with them telling them not to. That is just nothing but murder. Straight up murder. Yeah, and, you know, God won't, God is not going to, he's not going to wait forever to come back. No, he's not. He's not going to wait forever. I mean, I, I'm surprised he's waited this long. I'm really surprised he's waited this long, but he's waiting until that last person gives their life to the Lord, gives, his, gives their life to him. That's what he's waiting on. He's, get, he's trying to give everybody a chance. He's wanting, he's wanting everybody to have that chance to save their story. Another program powered by the Truth Network.